Hey everyone, my name is Jason Bell and what an action-packed weekend at Texas Card House. I played 1-3 No Limit Hold'em on Friday night and 1-2 on Saturday night. The 1-3 game acted more like a 2-5 or a 5-10 game where the opening raise about two-thirds of the time was about $15 and about a third of the time was around $30 to $40, the opening raise. The 1-2 game on Saturday night acted more like a 1-2 game, maybe a 1-3 game. Hope you guys enjoy. Please like and subscribe and here we go. Okay, on this first hand of the evening, I'm in middle position and I look down at a premium ace king of hearts. Oh yeah. The end of the gun opens for $40. That's right. This is a 1-3 game and he opened for $40. Alrighty. Well, I'm not going to stick around for $40. i am going to put in a 3-bet here and I 3-bet for 100 bucks, and it folds around back to the end of the gun who ends up making the call. The fact that he just made the call and didn't put in a cold 4-bet makes me think he certainly doesn't have aces or kings. I've got the blockers anyways, so I'm pretty certain he's got queens here, maybe jacks. Regardless, the pot is a little over 200 and the flop comes ace, ace, 10. Oh man. All right, the under the gun checks and I'm definitely putting some money into this pot. I bet $75, which is about 40% size of the pot. The under the gun thinks about this for a bit, maybe about 10, 15 seconds, and he decides to jam for his remaining stack, which is just over 200 bucks. And uh, I'm like, Awesome, I'll take it. I instantly call and I show my ace king and he has this huge look of frustration on his face at, at this point. The pot is uh, almost 650 bucks. The turn is a blank, the river's a blank. I take this one down and the under the gun mucks. Nice size pot here, I will take it. Okay, on the second hand of the evening, I'm in the big blind and I look down at yet another premium, pocket kings, all right. The low jack raises to $15, the high jack makes the call, the cutoff makes the call and the button calls. Yep, this is P Texas poker for you. Unbelievable. I'm going to put in some more money. $15 definitely isn't enough here. I bumped this one up to 90. I guess a case could be made for putting in a little bit more. Probably could have bet, you know, 105 to maybe 125, somewhere in that range. But I ended up betting 90 bucks and the hijack is the only one that makes the call. Button ends up folding here in frustration. He ended up showing some pocket fives here. Regardless, the pot is a little over 200 bucks and the flop is 10, 10, eight rainbow. All right, I've got two pair here, looking pretty good. Now I'm out of position, but this is, hand is just too strong just to check here. I bet $85 and the hijack thinks about this for a solid 20, 30 seconds and ends up making the fold, but I'll take it even though we didn't go further than the flop. Uh, it was a nice size pot here of a little over 200 bucks. Okay, we are now reporting hands from Saturday night. This is the one, two, no limit hold'em with a $300 max buy-in and I bought in for 300 bucks. We're in the big blind in this first reportable hand of the evening, and we look down at king three of clubs. The under the gun plus one limps, the middle position raises to $15, the low jack calls, the cutoff calls, the button calls. Yes, here we go again, Texas poker. I, of, of course, am gonna call with my 9,000% equity here, and the under the gun plus one folds. Pot is about 80 bucks. The flop is king, 10, five, all diamonds. Okay. Well, I've got top pair here, really horrible kicker, and the all diamond board is pretty darn scary. It ends up checking around. I think everyone was pretty scared at this board, so because everyone checked around, makes me think that I'm possibly pretty good here. The turn is the five of clubs, and you know what? I'm gonna see where I'm at. So I put in a bet of 30 bucks, and my $30 actually gets through and everyone else folds, so I'll definitely take this one. Okay, in this hand, I'm on the button and I look down at ace 10 offsuit. The under the gun plus one raises to $15. Low jack makes the call, folds around to myself. And I think this is a good spot to put in a three bet. So that's what I do. I three bet to $60. It folds around to the under the gun plus one who makes the call and the low jack quickly folds. So we're heads up to a flop, which comes 10, nine, seven with two hearts. All right. Top pair, top kicker. However, the under the gun plus one does not check to the aggressor, myself in this case. He ends up actually jamming for his remaining $130. So this is interesting. What could he have? It's 
I don't think he's got something like eight jack. It's possible that he's got jacks or queens in this spot. However, I didn't feel that this guy had much in this hand. I felt like he was on some sort of straight draw. So I make the call and the pot's a little under $400. The turn is the ace of spades and the river is the nine of spades. I show my ace 10 offsuit. The under gun plus one shows ace eight of clubs. So he was in fact on a straight draw and I'm glad I make the call here. So this was a really decent sized pot here. Good win. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the hand of the evening. I am in the low jack and I'll look down at pocket aces. The number one best preflop hand in all of poker. The middle position raises to $10 and of course I'm bumping this one up. I had three bet to 35 bucks. The hijack calls for $35, which was pretty interesting. It folds back around to the middle position player who ends up jamming for his remaining stack, which is about $284. Uh, thank you. I will take it. I end up jamming for my remaining stack. And then the hijack who sits directly to my left is thinking about this for a long time. He actually asked if anybody at the table had a coin so he could flip heads or tails to see if he should go all in or not. He ends up deciding and he takes the all in button and he's like, okay, if this lands on the all in side, the yellow side, I make the call. If it flips on the white call side, then I'm going to fold. And he flips it and it flips yellow all in. So he lives up to his word. He goes all in for his remaining stack, which was just about 250 bucks. So we are three ways all in pre-flop. Pot is just over $800. I show my pocket aces. The hijack is just devastated when I show my pocket aces. And he flips over ace nine offsuit the middle position player actually ends up sit verbally saying he has the ace of hearts, but he doesn't flip over his cards yet. So the flop is queen five, four with two hearts. The turn is the eight of hearts. And I'm just like, okay, does this guy really have the ace of hearts? Oh boy, if he does, I'm in a lot of trouble by the river. The river is a red card and it's two of diamonds. Whew. Boy, I dodged a bullet there at the end. He does show, that middle position player does show the ace of hearts. He doesn't show the other card. He mucks it, and I end up taking this monster pot down. What a hand. Okay, in this hand, I am in the cutoff, and I look down at ace eight of spades. The low jack limps. It folds around to myself, and I think this is a good spot to put in a raise, so I do. I bet $15. Folds to the big blind who makes the call and the low jack makes the call. So the pot is a little under $50 and the flop is king nine three, one spade. Big blind checks, the low jack checks, and yeah, I've got you know a backdoor possibility with the spades, but it really didn't hit much on this board, so I make the check. The turn is the jack of spades. So now my backdoor spade possibility is uh taken fruition. However, the big blind and the low jack both check. I think this is a good opportunity to put in uh, a bet here, try to build the pot in case if a spade hits on the river. So that's what I do. I bet 25, big blind folds and the low jack makes the call. So the pot is a little under a hundred bucks. The river is the two of spades. The low jack checks and in this case, okay, what is the right size here of bet? I didn't really feel that he had a king here. He might have been on some sort of draw. Certainly didn't seem like he hit anything given that he checked on the river. But I think a half size pot bet here might win this. And so that's what I do. I bet $45 and the low jack makes the call. I show the nut flush and the low jack ends up showing jack 10 of clubs. So he went in with, you know, essentially middle pair. I guess he was on a gutter to a straight draw and then hit the jack. So I don't know why he called the $45. Maybe he thought I was bluffing. It's certainly possible, but uh, I'm glad I took this one down. Okay, in this hand I'm on the button and I look down at pocket sevens. The end of the gun plus one raises to $15. Folds to the cutoff who makes the call and I think I'm gonna make the call here. I guess a case could be made to put on the squeeze, but I don't know that pocket sevens is squeezable enough. And I think it's more of a set mining hand. So that's what I do. I make the $15 call. The small blind and the big blind end up folding. So the pot is a little under $50. The flop is seven ace three with two diamonds. All right, I hit my set. 
The under the gun plus one and the cutoff both check. I gotta put some money into this pot. I bet something a little bit small, about a third of the size of the pot, so I bet 15 bucks. The under the gun plus one makes the call and the cutoff thinks about this for a bit, a solid 20 to 30 seconds, and he ends up folding. The turn is the king of spades. The under the gun plus one checks and I've got to put some more money into this pot. It's certainly possible that the plus one's got an ace or he could be on a diamond draw of some sort. But the under the gun plus one checks and I bet $50 here, about two thirds the size of the pot. And the plus one makes the call. So the pot's brewing a little bit. It's $178 and the river is the ace of clubs. All right, so I boat up here on the river. The under the gun plus one checks which pretty much means he probably didn't hit anything. I bet $100 and hoping that he would make the call, hoping that he had an ace or maybe two pair, but uh, he didn't, and he ends up folding pretty quickly, and I take this one down. Okay, in this hand, I'm in the big blind, and I look down at king five of spades. The under the gun limps, the hijack limps, the cutoff limps, the small blind raises to $10. I make the call. I think this is a good spot to make the call here. The under the gun calls, the hijack calls, and the cutoff calls. Oh boy, here we go again. Pot is $50, and the flop comes 8, 10, 6 with two spades. All right, so I've got some, some equity here. This is pretty nice. It checks to the hijack, who bets $40, and this is a person who always bet into multi-way pots. If there was a multi-way pot, it didn't matter what he had. He was going to put some money in there, and that's what he did this time around, so... Uh, I fully expected that and he bet 40 and I make the call still got the equity here and we are heads up to a turn which comes the jack of clubs I check and the hijack also checks so this is interesting here I'm still hoping for a spade to come here on the river however the river is the five of hearts all right so I didn't get there I've got practically nothing, uh, I guess bottom pair here. I make the check and the hijack checks behind and he ends up showing a 9-6 offsuit and he takes the pot. Okay, in this final hand of the evening, I'm on the button and I look down at ace-10 of clubs. The under the gun raises to $15. The plus one calls, middle position calls, and you know, I could put on a pretty super squeeze here. I think this is a very squeezable hand. However, I end up making the call, being in position, the small blind calls, and the big blind folds. <sighs> Yet again, one more time, Texas poker. The flop is nine ace five rainbow. All right, I've got top pair average kicker, I would say. The under the gun checks, and the under the gun plus one does his typical betting into a multi-way pot. His favorite sizing was $40, and he didn't let us down this time around. That's what he does. He bets $40. The middle position folds. I make the call with my top pair. The small blind calls and the under the gun calls. So the plus one, trying to get all these people to fold, uh, didn't really work this time. We are still very, very multi-way into a turn, which comes the queen of hearts. The under the gun checks. The under the gun plus one goes all in for his remaining stack, which was a whopping $37. I make the call, the small blind calls, and then the under the gun player jams for almost $650. Oh man, I, you know, this put me in a bad spot. I do have top pair, pretty horrible kicker, but with this many people in the pot, there's no way my ace 10 is going to survive. In all likelihood, somebody's got two pair or a better ace or maybe a set. So I end up making the fold. The small blind calls for his remaining stack, which was an even healthier size of 15 bucks. So the pot is a little over $400, and the river is the king of diamonds. The end of the gun shows two pair, yep. Queen nine, offsuit. The small blind shows three, four, offsuit. So I guess he was going for a gut shot here and didn't get there. And the end of the gun plus one mucks. So the end of the gun wins with his two pair, and I'm glad I got out of this pot. I guess a case could have been made, you know, if I put on the squeeze, I don't think that queen nine would have called. Maybe he would have, maybe he wouldn't have. There's no telling. Probably not with the queen nine offsuit. Anyways, this was a fun pot to watch. <laughs> So this was a wild two nights. 
Last night I played 1-3 at Texas Card House. I bought in for 800, played for about three hours, cashed out for 1104 for a profit of 304. And then tonight, I played 1-2 at Texas Card House, was in for $400, played for about three hours, and I was out for 1101 for a profit of 701. Crazy, crazy, crazy two nights, especially the 1-3 game, but it was a lot of fun. Six hours in total, 304 plus 701, that's a profit of just over $1,000. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe and feel free to make comments. Thank you.